Good evening, my dear fiends. Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Monster Movie Night. Here at our wonderful home and museum, the Monster Museum, that is, Gargoyle Manor. I am Babiga Monster, your host and creepio curator, along with my co-host and co-creepio curator, <laughs> Boris T. Buzzard. You're more of a coordinator, aren't you, Bo uh, Boris? <laughs> uh, Boris likes to uh, make sure things are uh, counted out and on their proper shelves, and he, he more or less knows where everything that I'm looking for is so that uh, he can go and get it for me. <laughs> yes, anyway, he makes me look very, very good at times and mm, sometimes not so good. Eh? <laughs> well, my dear fiends, it's that time of year, you know, when your thoughts are of getting outside, but I'm so glad that you're inside to watch us, our feature films tonight are very special because it's this time of year when a certain award is come out or getting ready to come out and of course uh, many hosts and uh, my fellow hosts and I look forward to seeing if we're on ballots and of course we are. I'm on the Rondo Hatton uh, ballot number 21 for favorite uh, horror host and also, uh, I can be written in for, well, uh, maybe Favorite Monster Kid of the Year Award, or uh, any such thing as that, behind the scenes, in front of the camera, uh, collector. <laughs> There's just so many categories, isn't there, Boris? But anyway, it's a very special time because, because of the man himself, Rondo Hatton, who happened to be, well, not only an actor, but he started out as a journalist, an American journalist, and he was in World War I, I believe it was, and a, uh, a handsome fellow, and when, after the war, he, he began to, uh, well, he began to change a bit. He, he uh, had contracted a disease called acromegaly. And, of course, it wasn't contracted, I should say, it was in the genes itself, and there was no external agent that caused it, and still he was a handsome fellow. He was one of the best-known faces in Hollywood for horror acting. Uh, Lon Chaney was known as a man of a thousand faces, but uh, Rondo had one face and used no makeup at all. So he was, he was specially made for our wonderful monster movies. And tonight we have uh, a double feature for you. I'm not going to tell you which ones it is. It's just Rondo Hatton. And so uh, it's going to be a little different tonight. I'm going to have to key in special words. <laughs> Let's see. Let's go over here and key in Rondo Hatton double feature for the Rondo Awards. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Now let's tune in the oscillator. There we go. And now let's go to the Haunted TV, Internet TV, and bring it up, shall we? <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'll come and get you. Let me out. Let me out.
Attention all cars. Attention all cars. General alarm. Car 22. Go to 733 Spring Avenue. It's a 341. That is all. Car 22, we'll go. 341. Yeah, the man says murder. Not Hal Moffat. Yes. No, stay away from me. I won't hurt you. No, no, stay away. District 17, all cars District 17, the 341 suspect mentioned in broadcast number 9 is reported surrounded in Waddell Street, 700 block, move in. in here somewhere. All right, let's get back here.
with it. Don't turn on the light. Who are you? What do you want? Keep quiet. If you're a burglar, I'm afraid there isn't much here for you to steal. I'm not a burglar. Then what do you want? You're not afraid of me? Well, I'm a little nervous, I guess, but why should I be afraid of you? There they are. Who? Some men. Are you in trouble? Yes, they're after me. Go into the bedroom. Do as I say. Just a minute. Yes? Have you seen a man around here? Well, no, I haven't seen anyone. Take a look in there. You sure you haven't seen anybody? Yes, I'm sure. There you go. Come on. was murdered in the same way as the other four victims. Authorities have issued a warning to all citizens to be on the lookout for this fiend. As far as the police know, he only appears at night. He is a large, heavy-set man, usually wearing a black coat and hat. Descriptions of the creeper have been submitted to headquarters, but these vary to such an extent that it's hard to give an accurate picture of the man's face. When last seen, he was on a tenement rooftop near the waterfront. And now turning to the other news of the day. Jimmy! Uh, morning, Mr. Haskins. Leave that radio alone. Sweep up the place. You getting paid to work, not to entertain yourself. Okay. Uh, that creeper guy murdered somebody again last night. Oh, murders, detectives, gangsters. That's all you think about. Get the broom. Okay. come from? Somebody stuck it under the door. Yeah. Oh. Don't you think it's kind of funny? Sticking a note under the door? No. And don't go trying to make a mystery out of it. Somebody probably too busy to pick up the stuff. Could be the creeper. Creeper, creeper, creeper. You give me the creeps. Well, it could be. That'd be a swell reason why I wouldn't want to see anybody or come out except at night. You just got to deliver these groceries. And don't forget the money. A dollar and a quarter. Okay. But I still think it might I be... know. So he's the creeper. Or you just creep along with that. I mean, hurry up with that stuff. And then get back here and do the rest of your work. Outside. How much? A dollar and a quarter. Go away.
Miss Ferris. That boy. You'll send Jimmy over with the rest of that order, won't you, Mr. Haskins? Yes, I will. If he ever gets back from that errand, I sent him on. He's been gone nearly two hours. Well, that's the boy for you. These days, they can't seem to keep their minds on their work. Good day, Mr. Haskins. Good day, Miss Ferris. Morning, Captain. What makes you think it's good? But does that beaming puss of yours mean that you have some good news? Uh uh, bad news. It's on the way. I just saw Commissioner Salisbury parking his car outside. The mayor's secretary is with him. Just thought I'd let you know, give you at least two minutes to think up a good story. Hold it, Lieutenant. Come back here. Who, me? Yeah, you. After all, I assigned you to the Creeper murders. And I need a partner in this little game of buck passing. By the way, just what have you done toward apprehending the murderer? Are you kidding? You know what we've done. We're operating the biggest dragnet in the history of crime in this city. Well, it isn't big enough. You haven't caught the creepy yet. Uh, I want every available man in the Homicide Bureau put to work on this case immediately. Now, wait, I, I... don't want excuses. I want the creeper in jail within 24 hours, or there'll be some changes made around here. Uh, oh, good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, Mr. Parkinson. Good, good morning. morning, Captain Donnelly. Uh, you're... Looking fine, Commissioner. And how's the missus? I trust she's feeling as good as you look. She's not. She's scared to death, like every other woman in town, since wholesale murder has the police department stymied. I presume you refer to the Creeper murders? You presume right. I've come here to find out why a killer can terrorize an entire city while the police department twiddles its thumbs. Oh, well, now, I wouldn't exactly call what we were doing thumb-twiddling, Commissioner. Then just what would you call it, Captain? His Honor the Mayor would like to know. Now, if you gentlemen will please sit down, I'll try to bring you up to date on the Creeper. We are up to date on the Creeper. We know that you haven't arrested him. And His Honor the Mayor delivered an ultimatum to Commissioner Salisbury this morning. He demanded action within 24 hours. If none is forthcoming, he will ask for the Commissioner's resignation. And I'm telling you, Donnelly, if you don't turn up something to quiet public opinion before tomorrow, your job won't be worth a plug nickel. Exactly what I was telling Lieutenant Gates when you came in. Wasn't I, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. You were. And I'll pass the, the word right on down the line till every man in the department knows exactly where this thing stands. You can depend on me, gentlemen. Very well. Shall we go, Commissioner? How'd I do? Great. We're still a good team. Homicide, Captain Donnelly speaking. Right? Okay, okay, we'll look into it. Everybody in town's got creeperitis. Who was it? Some grocer down near the waterfront. Thinks the creeper might have knocked off his delivery boy. The kid's been away from the store for three hours. Well, he just had time to get down there before lunch.
look. The creeper again. Yep. From the looks of that coffee pot, he can't be far away. Round up some men and start combing the neighborhood. I'll have a look around here. Okay. I'm going to call headquarters for more men. We'll give the whole district a house-to-house -house canvas. Are you Mr. Clifford Scott? Yes. Captain Donnelly, Homicide Bureau, and Lieutenant Gates. Mind if we come in? Not at all. Come right in. Thank you. What can I do for you, gentlemen? I believe you can give us some important information, if you will. I don't know what this is all about, but I'll be glad to help in any way that I can. Shall we go into the living room? Thank you. What is it, Clifford? I don't know yet, dear. These gentlemen are from the police department. They say they'd like to ask me some questions. Captain Downey, Lieutenant Gates, my wife. How, How do, you do you do? You can help us too, Mrs. Scott. I? Yes. I take it you've read about the murders committed by a character the newspapers call the Creeper? Why, yes. Well, we stumbled onto something this morning. It leads me to believe you can help us identify him. You mean it's someone we know? I think so. What was your class at Hampton University? 1930. You were in that class too, weren't you, Mrs. Scott? Yes. And you had a classmate named Hal Moffat. Remember him? He was a good friend of ours. We have an idea that Hal Moffat is the creeper. Hal? No, he couldn't be. We found this in his shack, among some of his other things. He apparently had been keeping it for some time. I remember when this was taken. It was right after a football game. Yes. It was the day Hal almost won the game single-handed. Two people from that college were killed by the creeper. Professor Cushman and a woman named Joan Bemis. We knew Joan quite well. I thought you might have. When did you last see Hal Moffat? We haven't seen him for years. No, he just disappeared. Disappeared? Well, none of us has seen him since his last year in college. You see, something happened to Hal. What? He was probably our best friend. In his last year at Hampton, he was captain of the football team. In the final game of the season, we were playing Rensselaer for the conference championship. The sports writers picked Hal for All-American honors. And if they had any doubt about it, the game he played against Rensselaer won their votes. Hal had a quick temper, but it certainly paid off on the football field. He was all over the place, blocking, backing up his line, passing Rensselaer dizzy, and up to the fourth quarter, had scored three touchdowns and brilliant broken field runs. Three times he converted for extra points. The score stood Hampton 21, Rensselaer 7. Hal's temper had made him a lot of enemies. But this year, everyone was his friend. 
He was one of the best players Hampton ever produced, and we were proud of him. Al and I were very close friends. There was only one catch to it. We were both in love with Virginia. And to complicate matters, Joan Bemis was madly in love with Hal. We were going to celebrate that night, the four of us. I had a date with Virginia, but Hal did a little conniving. He picked her up in his car and didn't arrive until the evening was half over, leaving Joan and me to amuse ourselves by staring at each other across the table. Of course, he had a story ready when they did get there. He always had a story. And knowing his temper, I seldom challenged him. Hi. I'm uh, sorry we're late, folks, but I had some car trouble and couldn't seem to find out what it was. And all of a sudden, it started just like that. You know how it is, Cliff, old boy. Hal did the scoring again, just like he did on the field that afternoon. Hal and I were roommates. He was the athlete and I was a scholar. I used to help him a lot with his studies. It's an old college custom, keeping football stars eligible to play. It wasn't because Hal was dumb. He was just too impatient to study hard. On the football field, he got action quick. But you can't stiff arm your way through a flock of chemistry problems. Yep, I got a very heavy date with Virginia right after chemistry class. And boy, have I got plans. Hal did some boasting, and I did some thinking. Then he made the mistake of asking me to check his chemistry answers. I saw a chance to keep him from having that date with Virginia. His answers were right, but I fixed that. I gave him a set of wrong ones, and he memorized them very carefully for the verbal quiz scheduled for the next day. Hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid are all catalytic agents. Very good, Mr. Scott. Now, Mr. Moffat. Sulfuric acid, when combined with H4N7, will form a solution of hydrochloric acid. You'd better remain after class, Mr. Moffat. You seem to have everything wrong today. Class dismissed. Hal realized that I had crossed him up. He was accustomed to being a winner, never a loser. He was plenty angry because I'd outsmarted him, and he showed it. <laughs> Professor Cushman put Hal to work on a difficult experiment that would keep him busy the rest of the afternoon. And just to needle him, I walked Virginia past the laboratory window. The look he gave us told me I'd better get away from there quick. He could never tell what he'd do when his temper flared. This time it brought tragedy. We visited him in the hospital and tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't answer. He just lay there, staring up at us. The doctors told us that the chemicals might affect certain glands and nerves, and if they did, his features would never be normal again. And you haven't seen him since then? No, he left the hospital after several weeks and just dropped out of sight. Did the doctors tell you anything else about him? I mean about his mental state. Oh, yes. One of them did say that Hal was pretty bitter when he left. Yeah. A thing like that could very easily have affected his mind. And if he is the creeper, I guess that's what happened. You mean he may have killed Professor Cushman just because he kept him after class that day? Possibly. A mental quirk can develop into an extreme case of paranoia. You say he was in love with you. Well, I don't know. I never took Hal very seriously because Clifford and I were in love with each other. I see. Well, thank you very much for the information you've given. Oh, I'm going to have your place watched day and night for a while, Mr. Scott. You mean he might come here? Well, you never can tell what a man will do when his mind's affected. Better to be on the safe side. He might hold you responsible for what happened. After all, you gave him the wrong answers. Yes, I did. Well, now, don't let it upset you. We won't let anything happen. And you will explain to Mrs. Scott about my men covering the place? She might think they're prowlers. Surely. Good night. Good night.
be right with you. See something you like, mister? It's a very fine piece, my friend. A very reasonable. You can have it for... Uh... What's the matter? Nothing. Uh, I was just going to say that you can buy it for practically nothing. How much? Well, uh, to you, twelve dollars and a half. I'll take it. I'll pay you for it tomorrow. Oh, sorry, uh, I don't do business that way. You don't trust me? No, in my business, it's, it's too expensive. Put it back or I'll call the police. It's me. Oh, I'm glad. Come in. I was worried about you. I mean, those men who were after you. Thanks for helping me. I brought you something. Oh, thank you. What is it? Don't you like it? Oh, I'm sure I do. Why don't you look at it? You see... I'm blind. Blind? I thought you might have guessed it last night. What did you bring me? Here. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. I can tell. Please, let's sit down. Why were those men chasing you? They thought I'd done something, but it wasn't my fault. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't. I don't know if I should accept this from you. You haven't even told me your name. It's Hal. Oh, mine's Helen. Last night you seemed surprised because I wasn't afraid of you. What's wrong, Hal? Should I be afraid? Everyone else is. Why? I can't tell you. Do you want to be friends with me? Sure. You're nice to me. And no one else is. Is that it? I think I understand. When you've been blind as long as I have, you learn to see through your senses. I can't explain it exactly, but... You get a feeling about people when you meet them. You see a picture of them in your mind. Not just what they look like, but what they really are. You see them much more clearly than you do with your eyes. Maybe that's why they say looks are deceptive. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I know. I'd like to help you if you'd let me. You can. How? Just let me come to see you. Of course I want you to. I'm alone most of the time, except when I give piano lessons. I have such a good idea of you now. But if I could touch your face, then... No, don't do that. Why not? I don't want you to. Hal. Hal. Commissioner. Good morning, Mr. Parkinson. 
I thought you'd be dropping by about this time. So, you're sitting here playing gin rummy with another creeper murder on the front page of the newspapers. I think better when I'm enjoying my hobby. I'm a pigeon fancier. <laughs> now, you listen to me, Donnelly. We told you. I know, I know. You've told me already that you wanted the creeper arrested within 24 hours. Well, gentlemen, he's still at large. Now, I suppose the mayor and yourself have decided to take over personally. No doubt you'll have the killer in custody in 10 minutes flat. I'll just let the newspapers know that it's in your lap. Uh, just a minute, Captain. Let's not be hasty about this. You don't mean that His Honor the Mayor wouldn't relish the job, that you wouldn't like to take over? That's beside the point. The entire city is up in arms, and the creeper goes on killing people. Now, I'm a reasonable man, Donnelly. Now, I'm glad to hear it, Commissioner. Now that the pressure's off, I can let you know that we have the first definite clues to the identity of the creeper. Who is it? Yes, who, who is it? I said clue, gentlemen. When I'm certain, I'll give you the lowdown, and I believe it'll be soon. That's all I can tell you is the moment. Now, if you will excuse me, I have gates on a triple blitz. Why didn't you let them know about the newspaper clippings? What? And have those publicity hounds filling the front pages with a lot of stuff that would scare the creeper right out of town? Hmm. Discard. She's coming along very nicely, Mrs. Arbringer. You'll be playing the classics before you know it. I don't want to play that stuff. I want to play boogie woogie. Oh, you can play that too as a hobby. But first you must master the things that are solid. But boogie woogie is solid and really simple. Oh, hush, dear. Put your music away. We're going home now. She gets that from her father. He plays hot trumpet in the fireman's band. <laughs> Come along, dear. See you next week at the same time. I'll see that she practices like you told her to, Miss Helen. I'll be right in the groove. Oh, Dorothy. Good night. Good night. you, Hal. I didn't hear you come in. I didn't knock. Are those men after you again? No. I was listening outside. When those people left, I just walked in. Please sit down. You make a living teaching kids to play? Oh, yes. I managed to get along. It's tough doing that, you being like you are. I love music. And I like teaching it to others. I don't find my blindness too much of a handicap. Won't you ever be able to see? The doctor told me a year ago that there might be a chance if I had an operation. Why don't you do it? Oh, it would be very expensive. How much? A lot of money. So much that I don't even think about it anymore. If you could see, you'd... What were you going to say, Hal? Nothing. What's wrong, Hal? Why don't you want me to see you? Are you afraid? Yeah, I'm afraid. But why? You'd know if you could see me. Well, if I'm not afraid of you now, why would I be if I could see you? You would be. Everybody else is. 
then it's probably just as well that I'm blind. Don't you have any idea how much that operation would cost? Oh, the doctor said it would be two or three thousand dollars at least. I'm going now. Hal? Yeah? If you'd just let me touch your face, I'm sure that...
who are you? You don't remember me. No, I... You're not Hal. Yeah. I've changed a little since I last saw you. Have you? Your face. It frightens you, doesn't it? I can't believe it. This is what you and Cliff did to me. But we never knew. Yeah, you're afraid of me. Just like all the others. You've even got a detective outside now to protect you from me. They insisted on guarding the house. They told us you were the creeper. That you'd killed all those people. Joe and Professor Cushman and the others. I need some money. A lot of money. I'll do anything I can to help you. But we don't keep very much money in the house. Cliff's doing all right for himself. You've probably got a lot of jewels. Good evening, Mr. Scott. Hello. I'm sorry you have to stay out here. Well, that's all right, sir. It's my job. Good night. Good night. Keep quiet. Virginia. There's Cliff. Tell him to come on up. Come on. I'm up here, Cliff. Okay, dear. Hello, darling. What's the matter? Hello, Cliff. It's Hal. Hal? Yeah. It's been a long time, Cliff. I don't blame you for not recognizing me. Cliff, they were right. He is the creeper. He killed those people. But why, Hal? What happened to you? Look at my face. Yes, but... That's what happened to me, thanks to you. Why did you come here? I need money. I told him we'd be glad to do anything we could to help him. Well, yes, of course. Get those jewels of mine in the wall safe. But... All right. They're in here. I'll take it. But it's locked. I keep the key in the desk drawer. I won't need a key. But, Hal, there's personal papers in it. Things of no value to you, but very valuable to me. I'd like to keep them, if you don't mind. Okay. Unlock it. Remember, I'm watching you. and let the detective in. I'm sorry, Hal, but I had to. Mr. Scott! Mr. Scott! What's going on? I heard a shot. It's Hal Moffat. He's upstairs. My husband shot him. Cliff! No. Oh, no. Calling cars 41 and 53, District 5. Cars 41 and 53, District 5. Proceed at once to 500 block, Cottage Grove Avenue. Investigate a 341. Proceed with caution. This job is by the creeper. There's another one. Oh, yeah. He's been hit, all right. Maybe he's been hurt badly enough to slow him up. Captain Donnelly? Yeah. He just got a flash on the radio. They've traced him to the tenement district over by Grant Avenue. Well, maybe. Hey, you know what I think? Yeah, I know.
Ellen. Oh, Hal, you startled me. You came in by the fire escape. Are you in trouble again? No. I've got something for you. What is it? This stuff will bring enough for that operation. Where did you get these? Oh. Hal, you're hurt. I'm all right. You have that operation right away. Hal, wait. I'd like an appraisal of these jewels. Yes, ma'am. It'll take a few minutes. Would you care to wait? Yes, I'll wait. when he gave you these jewels? He told me to sell them and use the money for an operation on my eyes. Didn't you think that was a little funny? I started to ask him about them, but he left before I had a chance. Don't you realize you can get yourself into a lot of trouble protecting a criminal? A criminal? Well, I think you can call him that. Oh, I can't believe it. Didn't you know the police were after him? No. Not even that first night when they came to your room? I thought they were just some men. He never told me. No. No, I guess he wouldn't. I knew he was in some sort of trouble, but I didn't realize it was with the police. What has he done? Murder at wholesale. He happens to be the creeper. The creeper. Maybe you'd better sit down. He was so nice to me. I just can't believe this about him. Extra, extra, blind girl confesses friendship with creeper killer. Read all about it. Blind girl confesses. Extra, extra, read all about it. Blind girl tells all about the creeper. Extra, extra, get your late edition here. Blind girl tells all. Paper. Yes, sir. Blind girl tells all. Read all about it. Get your paper here. Get your late edition. Blind girl tells all.
was a fine thing you did, Miss Page, helping us trap the killer. I wonder how he feels about it. He trusted me, wanted to help me. Don't let it get you. His mind had snapped. After all, he was a psychopathic killer. And by the way, I have some news for you. I've been talking to certain people, and we... <coughs> they think you're going to get that operation. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> you look tired. Why don't you, may I see you home? Oh, thank you. There goes my pigeon. I would like to accept this uh, Rondo Award for, well, myself and Boris here at Monster Movie Night. Thank you for all your votes and your your faithful watching of us every episode, every month, every year for the last 13 seasons. And of course, over 270 episodes. I mean, what a wonderful award it is to have. And in fact, mine seems to be a little bit bigger than everyone else's. <laughs> what? 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 What do you mean? What do you mean? I didn't win. What do you mean I got to give it back? No, wait, no, you can't. No, you can't have it. No, no, wait, wait, what's going on? No, wait, no, no, wait, no, oh, no, what's going on? What? Whoa, what a dream, a nightmare indeed. It wasn't even a good nightmare. It was partially good, but it was, I dreamed that I, it must have been a dream. It's not there. I dreamed that, well, I won. A Rondo, a giant Rondo award uh, for, for being me. And, and it was so beautiful, and I was so happy. And then they said I didn't win, and they took it back. And, and I'm, oh, at least it was just a dream. It was all a dream. <laughs> I might still have a chance yet. <laughs> so, my fiends, <laughs> let us go into our next uh, feature. And uh, that's right, we, we got two this time, a double feature of uh, Rondo Hatton. Hmm. So let us get ready to go into it now, shall we? And uh, I'll see what I can do about going back to sleep and, and getting some of that Rondo Awards back in play again. Let's, let's go to it right now. Here it is. How? Gee, why didn't you let me know? I didn't make up my mind till yesterday. I always knew you'd make it up someday, darling. You didn't come to see me, then? No, Hal, I didn't. I'm going to work here. In Domingo? I answered an ad, and here I am, for a while at least. Just two pieces, wasn't it, miss? Yes, that's right. My trunk's coming later. Thanks. Well, trunk sounds like you came to stay. Look, Jean, even though you haven't changed your mind, couldn't I see you once in a while anyway? 
Of course, Hal. I'll call you just as soon as I'm settled. Well, uh, couldn't I give you a lift wherever you're going? <laughs> Thanks, but I think they're sending a car for me. Okay. I'll be waiting for that phone call. I'm in the book. Good night, Hal. Good night. Can you tell me whether Miss Dollard's car is here? Well, I don't see it. Expecting it? Well, I thought so. Is there a taxi here? Well, yes, if you can call it that, but it's over at Willow Lake right now with a fishing party. I'll bet you're going to be Miss Dollar's new companion, ain't you? Yes, I am. Well, in that case, we've got to get you up there. Oh, hell! Oh, no. This young lady wants to go up to Zenobia Dollars. Can you give her a lift? Can I? Right this way, lady. Good night, Bill, and thanks a lot. Well, anybody think I done him a favor? <laughs> Maybe I did. What are you doing now? Well, after I graduated, I went in partnership with Dad. We're raising thoroughbreds. You always loved horses, didn't you? I loved you too, Jean. But now that you've really seen Domingo, maybe... Oh, I'm sorry, Hal. I wasn't very nice about it when you asked me to live here, was I? You were entitled to your own point of view. What happened to that career you wanted? Oh, I had it for a little while. I got to be merchandise manager for a woman's shop in San Francisco. Didn't you like it? I loved it. But it was too hectic. My doctor ordered me to take a rest. So now you're going to work for Zenobia. <laughs> What's she like, Hal? Well, she's swell, Jean. Can't understand why she has so much trouble keeping a companion. She does? Why? A little trying to work for him, maybe. They understand the last one left to get married. You probably won't last long either. <laughs> has she always been afflicted? No. Happened about two years ago when she was doing some research in Central America. She's been all over the world trying to be cured. She came home to stay about a year ago. Must be terrible to be blind. I don't blame her for being a little cranky. Zenobi is not cranky. A little moody sometimes, but I think you'll like her. <laughs> well, there it is. Before you catch up on your reading. <laughs> oh, you're joking. Nobody lives here. I warned you to be lonely. But there isn't a light in the place. Suppose no one's home. There must be. She never goes out at night. coming now. Mm -hmm. Mario, this is Miss Kingsley, Miss Dollar's new companion. She's expecting her. My phone number's in their book, too. Don't forget to use it. <laughs> of course, Hal. Good night, and thanks for the lift. Good night. Well, it is in, isn't she? Can't you speak? Oh, I'm sorry.
Miss Kingsley? Yes. I'm Zenobia Dollard. Yes, Miss Dollard. You sound frightened. What's the matter, my dear? Nothing. But it's so dark in here. Has Mario forgotten to make a light? I'm sorry. Mario! Bring a light, please. I do hope you like me and be happy here, Miss Kingsley. I'm sorry the car wasn't there to meet you, but I really didn't expect you until morning. Have you had your dinner? Such as it was. The bus only stopped long enough for a bite. Oh, well, then you must have something. Mario, bring Miss Kingsley a glass of milk. Oh, no, please don't bother. It's no trouble at all. You may find it a little lonely here. The countryside looked beautiful from the car. I don't notice the loneliness myself. Because the blind are always lonely. Later on, you'll travel, but I'd like to spend part of each year at home. Memories give light to a dark world. Were you born here, Miss Dollard? Yes. My grandfather built this house. He spoiled me outrageously. He even allowed me to climb over this beautiful furniture. Everything is lovely. The streams I fished in with my grandfather, the lake, the woods, the cattle on the hilltop silhouetted against the setting sun. They're all scenes I can conjure up from memories. But when we travel, I shall have to depend on your eyes. Can you describe scenes vividly? I'll do my best to please you, Miss Dollard. Is that you, Mario? Has he brought your milk, Miss Kingsley? <laughs> yes, but I stopped drinking milk when I was a child. <laughs> then it's high time you started again. Adults need milk, too. You see, I feel responsible for your well-being while you're with me. Oh, you're very kind, but I... Kingsley's luggage in her room. That would be all for tonight, Mario. Good night. Would you like for me to read to you tonight, Miss Dollard? Oh, that would be an imposition. Tomorrow will be time enough to discuss your duties. Would you come close to me, Miss Kingsley? You're very pretty. Thank you. Nice hat. I know you now as well as though I could see you. There's character as well as beauty in your face. I think you're going to stay with me. I hope you must go to bed now. Let me have your arm as far as the door. Your room is upstairs, of course, next to mine. It will be the only one lighted. I'm going to enjoy having you here. Good night and pleasant dreams. Good night, Miss Dollard. Sleep well. And we don't breakfast early. Thanks. You're very considerate. Good morning, Miss Dollard. Good morning, my dear. I can't imagine what you must think of me. Being late for breakfast my first morning. That doesn't matter. I don't live by the clock. Sit down. I think Mario has brought your grapefruit. Yes, thank you. Did you sleep all right? I don't know when I slept so well. Mm. It's the good country air. Mario just brought in your mail. Will you open it, please? That will be one of your duties. Oh, by the way, you had a phone call while you were asleep. From whom? From Hal Wentley. I didn't know that you knew anyone in Domingo. I don't except Hal. I was amazed to run into him when I got off the bus last night. He brought me out here. Yes, so he told me. Here's a gas bill for $60. That's all right. 
We buy it in tanks for our light and heat. Send them a check later. Mm, the Peter Pan summer camp is asking for a contribution. Send them $10. Here's a letter addressed to Miss Betty Saunders in your care. Oh. Forward it to 153 West 119th Street, New York City. She's the young lady you're replacing. I don't think she'd ever been out of earshot of a trolley car until she came here. Couldn't she get used to the country? Oh, it wasn't the country. She didn't seem to like Mario. He is an atrocious servant, I know, but he was born on the place and he's very loyal. And I'm afraid if I turned him out, he'd be unable to care for himself. May I have Betty's letter, please? Here it is. I have Mario mail it. Finish your breakfast, my dear. I'll be in the garden. No, I'll come with you now. Mario wasn't the real reason for Betty's going away. She left to get married. That's what Hal said. Oh, please don't think we were discussing your affairs. He just happened to mention it when he heard I was coming here to work. I hope you don't have a boyfriend in San Francisco who's going to come down and whisk you away from me. Oh, no. There isn't anyone in San Francisco now. Good. I thought I made it clear I wanted someone free and unattached. Well, I'm entirely on my own. Well, nobody even knows I'm here. Except Hal Whitley. I do hope you'll stay, Jean. I'm really very lonely. You can count on me, Miss Dollard. I know I'm going to like it here. Oh, of course you are. You may go and telephone Hal now. Mario will show you where. Thank you. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high or veils and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. What a beautiful picture. I'm so glad you chose Wordsworth tonight, dear. Shall I go on, Miss Dollard? No, my dear. Let's stop with that beautiful picture. I had no idea it was so late. You read so well, I forget about the time. You must be tired. No, I enjoy it, too. But I don't want to wear you out. Run along to bed, dear. All right. Good night, Miss Dollard. Good night, dear.
worry, Mario. She's in excellent health. May I have them, please? You beautiful creature. You love Zenobia, don't you? If Zenobia gives you the food that makes you strong and virile, and the most beautiful of your kind. My lovely Drachenina, I must rob you of a little of your beauty. Grow strong, my friend, and bring me a new blossom. slept again. Oh, it doesn't matter. I just thought you might be ill. Oh, I'm all right. But my alarm ran down without waking me. I can't understand that. Why, well, it's the good country air, team. Don't worry about it so long as you feel well. Oh, I feel all right, but I can't seem to wake up in the mornings. This never happened to me before. You're just relaxing. It's good for you. Are you dressed? Yes. I was just about to come down. Well, then let's go down together. You're such a fine, healthy girl, Jean. You know, I'm becoming more and more dependent on you. I try to be of help to you, Miss Dollar. You are. I don't know what I'd do without you. Oh, well, uh, after you've had your breakfast, I want you to drive down to the village. Mario's off on an errand. I'd love to. Good morning, miss. Oh, good morning, Mr. Stapleton. My, but this place is deserted. 
Where is everybody? Oh, they're having trouble down at Jim Stanley's place. Two of his cows died this morning, and now his little girl is sick. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, it's been a terrible year, especially for cattle. May I have a stamp? Certainly. Airmail. Airmail? Yes, don't you have any? Well, not much call for airmail stamps. I guess folks around here ain't in such a hurry. <laughs> How about two threes and a two? We'll compromise on that. Let me lick them for you. It's Betty Sanders, huh? What? Why, Betty's the girl who used to work for Miss Anobi before you. Yes, I know it. Why, I didn't know you was acquainted with her. May I have my letter, please? I'll take care of it for you. Anything else this morning? Yes, Miss Dollard wants a few skeins of navy blue wool. Well, that's in the dry goods department. It doesn't have to match exactly. I think we have that. Well, that's it. <laughs> I'll take four. Four? What's she making now? I think it's another boy's sweater. Oh, she's always doing something for the kiddies around here. A lot of them wouldn't have sweaters if it wasn't for her. How much is it? I'll put down her bill. And remember me to Miss Zenobia. Thanks, I will. Yeah. Oh, uh, if you happen to see her, please don't mention that I've written to Betty Saunders. No? Why? Well, she might think it a little strange. Well, I do, too. Is something worrying you? Now, maybe I could tell you whatever it was you asked, Betty, and ease your mind right away. I was wondering if Betty Saunders really left to get married, or if there was some other reason. Why do you say that? I don't know exactly. But I'm nervous all the time, and I wondered if Betty felt the same way. Oh, maybe it's the house that depresses me. That old house was a different place when Zenobi was young. Nothing lonesome about it then. Why, folks used to come for a hundred miles for their parties. Sometimes I think Shirley lives there now because of past associations. Oh, she's the kindest, most thoughtful woman I know. Oh, a little strange sometimes, maybe. Even moody, you might say. But uh, I shudder to think what I'd be like if I lost my sight. Oh, it isn't that I mind. Miss Dollard's been lovely to me. Is it Mario? Oh, I know he's not very pleasant to have around, but he's lived here for 40 years. He's never hurt anybody yet. Try to understand him a little, both of them. And if you get lonesome, come on down here for a visit. Thanks, I will. Thank you. 
are you? How dare you come in this room without me? Didn't I tell you to wait? not die like the others. I'll be careful not take too much. You remember your bargain, Mario. And I'll remember mine. I can't say what it is, friends, from this sort of examination, but it looks like poison. Howdy, Hal. Hello. Howdy. How are you, boy? I never heard of any poison weed around here. Nor me. And I've been farming in this county for 20 years. There ain't no poison weed around here. Well, certainly. I never heard of any. I tell you, a plague has hit our cattle. But there's no outward sign of any disease. That is, that I know about. How about Jim Stanley's kid? Ain't you heard? She died about an hour ago. What'd she die of, Cal? Well, I'm no MD, and maybe it's not for me to say. But Amal said she took sick about an hour after eating her breakfast. What are you driving at, Cal? Well, it looks to me like this cow died of weed poison. So maybe Jim Stanley's girl died of milk poison. You know what that means. The dairies in town ain't gonna buy her milk. I telephoned the Department of Agriculture yesterday. They're sending an expert. Good idea, Hal. Now, don't go borrowing trouble. Wait until after an investigation. I ain't waiting. My herd's worth more than my land. There's been too many cattle dying like this around here. I'm getting out. My beloved has gone down into his garden, to the beds of spices, to feed in the gardens and to gather lilies. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. Thou art beautiful, O oh my love, and terrible as an army with banners. Did I hear Mario come in? Yes. Thanks, Mario, but I don't want any milk tonight. You'd better drink it, dear. You know how well it makes you sleep. But I'm not sleeping well, Miss Dollard. I have nightmares. <laughs> it may sound silly, but I think it's all this milk I'm drinking. Oh, but nonsense. Perhaps you'd rather have some fruit or... Thank you, Miss Dollard, but I don't care for anything at all tonight. Thou art beautiful, O oh my love, and terrible as an army with banners.
dollars. Miss Dollard. Dollard, I couldn't sleep, so I thought if you were still up, I'd... Miss Dollard? It's <laughs> you, oh, Mario. I thought I heard someone moving around down here. I thought it might be Miss Dollard. So I came down to see if there was something I could do for her. Where is she? Go back upstairs and see that she's in her room. We'll hope she sleeps better tomorrow night. And come back quickly.
morning, Bill. You got my balance figured up? Yeah. Twenty-seven eighty. I hate to see it go, Lynn. You're making a big mistake. You wouldn't say that if you'd seen the sale of Jim Stanley's place yesterday. Plenty of buyers for the stock and equipment. Not so much as a dollar was bid on the farm. All this will blow over, Lynn. It's a mistake to get in a panic and abandon your property. Common sense. You'd be smart to sell out, too, if you could find a buyer. I just made a down payment on 100 acres over in Turville County. I'm getting out while I've got a herd and a family. Well, the uh, folks is waiting, Bill, so goodbye. Goodbye. Good morning, Mr. Stapleton. Good morning, Miss Kingsley. How are you today? Oh, I'm all right, thank you. Well? Uh, I've got a letter for you. Looks like Miss Saunders moved again. Do you remember the day she went away? Did you sell her a ticket? Did you see her get on the bus? Uh, no. Mari must have driven her over to the station. Jean. Jean. Oh, Hal, I... Why, I'm so ashamed. Your mother was talking to me and I fell asleep. I have no idea what she was saying. Jean, this is Mr. Moore. Jean Kingsley. How do you do? How do you do? Excuse me, I'll tell mother we're back. Mr. Moore, Mrs. Wentley was telling me that you and Hal were out looking for poison plants. Yes, with the usual lack of success. How could poison weeds suddenly appear in a district where they were previously unknown? There are many ways. The wind sometimes carries seed hundreds of miles. The birds could bring it. And it could come in fertilizer, feed, or even other seed. Isn't it rather peculiar that although so many cattle have died, you're still unable to locate the weed? Yes, it is. And I'm supposed to know where to look for them. That is, where they'd be growing in relation to soil and moisture and so forth. You know, Hal's a pretty good botanist himself. Could anyone have deliberately introduced the weed? Well, I don't. Whatever put that idea in your head? Well, when cattle are dying all around from eating poison plants where there are none, it is rather mysterious, isn't it? Oh, we were just talking about poison plants. So I heard. Are milk and cattle poisoning common in America? Fortunately not. Well, poison plants do spring up occasionally, and when they do, cattle will eat them and poison themselves and their milk. But when it causes the abandonment of entire settlements, it's really quite serious. Isn't there any way of eradicating the weeds? There is now. That's why I'm here. Got to find the weeds to eradicate them. Oh, I had no idea it was so late. Will you walk to the car with me, Hal? Sure. I'm very glad to have met you, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Hope to see you again. Fool, she's only fainted. She may have discovered I'm not blind. Are you all right, Jean? Can you speak now? You faint. 
Yes. I just come into the room. How stupid of me. I'm all right now. Can you stand now if Mario helps you? I am standing. Come, Jean, sit down and have something to eat. I don't think I can. Why, nonsense. Fainting is an indication of weakness, and food will give you strength. Mario, bring her some brandy. Come, sit down. Sit down, Jean. Is Mario getting the brandy? He's bringing it now. Oh, Mario, will you bring another glass, please? I'll have some brandy tonight. He's brought two glasses, Miss Dollar. Oh. It's to the right of your knife. Have everything, dear? Yes. Come, Jean. You're not eating anything. I don't feel well, Miss Dollard. You'll have to excuse me. Oh, well. Perhaps you'd better go to your room and lie down. Thank you. We got two more dead cows here. Now what you gonna do about it, mister? We don't need you to tell us they're dead. Take it easy, please. Tom, this is your place. You do the talking. Yeah, come on, Tom. Well, it's like you heard. I got two dead cows, and I want to know what you're gonna do about it. There's more cattle died since you got here than died before. And we're tired being told it's poison weed. Now, wait a minute. There's nothing I can do about it tonight. We'll hold an autopsy on those cows in the morning. Oh, that's oh, a in the meantime, I suggest you put your cattle back in the barns and keep them there. Well, we didn't need you to tell us that. Maybe we've got some extra. Oh, we've had autopsy around here before. Never found out nothing. Oh, fine. Same here, Matt. Yeah. You suppose there could be anything to Gene's idea? I don't know. I'm ready to try anything. You can't blame these farmers. We tell them their cattle are dying from eating poison weeds, and we can't find a single specimen in the countryside anyplace. Let's stop by the Dollard home on the way. It's a good idea. I want to meet Miss Dollard anyway. It's Mario I'm thinking about. Zenobia couldn't be mixed up in anything. Would you like to read to me, Jean? Would you rather look at my beautiful plants? Mario, bring some food. Come. These are my beautiful drachenina. I brought them all from the jungles of Central America. I was going to give them to science until I discovered my uncle had gambled away my lands. Now my drachenina are winning them back for me. All of them. How can a plant recover your land? These stupid farmers are leaving because their cattle are dying, but not from eating poison weeds. The poison I make from Drachonema's beautiful flowers leaves no trace. That's very clever, Miss Dollard. But how can it help you to drive away the farmers? Once we owned thousands of acres around here, I'll own them again. When these petty farmers are driven off, I'll buy up all the land for delinquent taxes.
feed it, Jean. Let it drink. With your own strength, you've made it strong. <laughs> you don't understand. It's your own blood. You're going to die, Jean, like the others. But it won't be really dying, because you'll live on in this beautiful plant. But people will miss me. How will you explain my disappearance to Hal? <laughs> when I tell him you've returned to San Francisco without saying goodbye, he'll be hurt. Perhaps he'll be so hurt he'll forget you completely. No one will ever suspect me of anything. Not dear, blind Zenobia. And when I have my lands back again, I shall miraculously recover my sight. Come, my dear. You pour it. Give a little of yourself to Drachenima. Mario, stop her! Wentley, Miss Zenobia. Oh, come in, Hal. Thank you. Is someone with you? Yes. Miss Dollard, I'd like to introduce Mr. Moore. How do you do, Mr. Moore? How do you do, Miss Dollard? Won't you come into the sitting room? Thank you. Mr. Moore's from the Department of Agriculture. Oh. We've been trying to locate the weeds that have been poisoning the cattle around here. Any success so far, Mr. Moore? Not yet. We're sorry to bother you at this late hour, but we thought perhaps you might have heard something in the old days that would help us. About poison weeds? Yes, Hal tells me your family was the first to settle here. Yes, they were. The Dollards owned all the land around here. But I never heard anyone mention poison weeds. It begins to look like this is the first time they've put in an appearance. Has Mario been in all evening, Miss Zenobia? No, he drove Jean to the railroad station. The railroad? Yes. You mean Jean's gone? Just before dinner. I was terribly upset. I had no idea she intended to leave me. Well, I can't understand her going without saying goodbye to me. She's not well, Hal. That's why I didn't attempt to dissuade her. She's been terribly nervous ever since she came here. Yes, I know I that. I think she was either on the verge of a nervous breakdown or just recovering from one when she applied for the position. You may be right about that, but are you sure she didn't leave any message for me? She didn't, Hal. But she'll probably write to you as soon as she gets back home. Well, maybe she left some word with Mario. Is he back yet? No, not yet. But if she did, I'll have him drive over with it as soon as he returns. Thanks. I'll appreciate that. I thought you and Jean were becoming fond of each other, Hal. I had the same idea. We had a little spat this afternoon, but I didn't think that was serious enough to drive Jean away. Perhaps it's all for the best, Hal. Maybe. We'll run along now. Don't get up. We'll let ourselves out. Then good night. Good night. Have Hal bring you over again, Mr. Moore. Thank you, Miss Dollard. Good night. Good night. I don't believe Mario ever took Jean to the railroad. Doesn't seem likely she'd have gone without saying goodbye to you. That's what I thought. Come on, I want to see something. It's cold. This car hasn't been used. Something's wrong. I'll look around here. You go for help. The nearest phone's at my place. This must be destroyed. They'll hang you if you don't burn everything.
Jitters, I guess. What you need is a hot drink. Now you just relax and forget everything that's happened. When we get home, I'll fix you a nice big glass of warm milk. Well, my dear fiends, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our little time together and for our great double feature of Rondo Hatton and uh, had a little fun with uh, one of my masks, my new uh, exhibits here at the museum, a Rondo Hatton mask. And isn't he beautiful? I, I sort of used him as a prop for an impromptu a dream <laughs> insertion. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that one. That was just a little uh, play on, well, a little joke on myself. <laughs> and who knows? It's possible. It's possible. But if not this year, maybe next year, at least I was nominated. And I'm so happy to have been nominated. This makes my, oh, third or fourth time, I believe it is, to have been nominated, and I'm just so happy about that. But I'm more happy that you're here each and every episode, so that Boris and I can spook you, scare you, and chillify you. <laughs> well, until next time, until we can scare you again with another episode or two, <laughs> as always... Keep screaming.